Welcome traders to the Tickmill Weekly Market Outlook for week commencing the 10th of May with me, Patrick Munley. A sharply below consensus read in April's non-farm payrolls prompted a sell-off in the dollar across the board on Friday as it's likely revealed that some pressure from the Fed to shift a less dovish rhetoric. At the same time, the data miss was not enough to severely dent the underlying recovery story leaving the global risk sentiment broadly supported as equities can also continue to benefit from the lower for longer story. A globally supported risk appetite may continue to put some pressure on the dollar in the week ahead. Data-wise, the April inflation report will be the highlight of the week, with economists expecting headline CPI to come in at 3.7% year on year. The jump in inflation is largely expected by markets and may fail to drive a big change in the Fed's rate expectations. Also, considering the lack of signs that the Fed is ready to react to higher inflation just yet. All in all, the negative dollar real rate negative, uh, narrative sorry, may remain intact and keep the dollar on the back foot. Another key event in the US will be Wednesday's $41 billion 10-year uh, Treasury auction, with economists expecting another rise in Treasuries to materialise soon. But as long as the bond market proves resilient, there will be additional room for any dollar bear trend to gather pace. So from a technical perspective, the dollar index closed below that trend line that we were watching uh, last week at the 9030 level. Now anticipate some follow through to test 8965. Uh, from here, we could see a bounce. If we don't find uh, support at the 8965, we anticipate a retest of prior lows down to 8930 and then on to uh, monthly range support at 8850. As the soft dollar environment uh, is set to spill into the week ahead, the upside pressure on Euro, Euro may uh, remain in place. It is a very quiet week on the Eurozone data front, both the May uh, German ZEW on Tuesday and March industrial production on Wednesday should have limited impact on the Euro, meaning the Euro dollar direction will largely be driven by the wider dollar story. While the April US CPI should soar to 4% year on year, uh, the latest non-farm payroll supports the Fed's wait and see approach. Uh, the outlook for the euro dollar is clearly improving. The eurozone data should rebound as we get into the summer, while the speculation about the ECB QE tapering is growing. Coupled with the general soft dollar environment, this points to uh, further upside for the euro dollar. And from a technical perspective, now that we've taken out that trend line resistance, at the uh, 121.17, 121.20 area. Uh, I anticipate now that we trade up into get a test of 122.47, may see a pullback from there, but if we don't find sellers there, then we look for a retest of prior highs up into 123.40 and then on to a monthly range resistance, 124.16. Uh, Decisive downturn by the dollar on Friday pushed dollar yen lower. The yen has been the smallest beneficiary of the dollar weakness last week due to its inverse correlation to risk appetite. In the week ahead, the Treasury auction and US CPI will keep investors heavily focused on rates dynamics, with the yen's short term outlook staying heavily tied to the US bond yield. A continuation of the goods momentum in global equities, along with risk of uh, US yields starting to tick back up, may see the yen uh, still unable to enter a steady appreciation trend for now. Data-wise, it's gonna be a pretty quiet week in Japan with only uh, data from March in focus, trade data, sorry, from March in focus. From a technical perspective, if we can hold the 108.15, I like uh, the upside here in the dollar yen to test the 110.46. However, if we fail to hold trendline support at the 108.10, look for a retest of monthly range support down to the 106.40 area. Should be a calmer week for sterling after the BOE meeting and the Scottish elections last week. The BOE tapering announcement had a muted impact on sterling as the reduction in the pace of purchases wasn't overly aggressive. While the full Scottish election results are uh, still being decided, any negative impact on sterling should be limited, even if the pro-independent parties win, which looks 
pretty unlikely at the moment. As another Scottish independence referendum is now seen to be taken off the table, or at the very least being years away at best. Uh, so technically what we're looking for now is, uh, is some strength in sterling, I think. On the latter, uh, the main focus of the week uh, in terms of data is going to be the first quarter reading of GDP on Wednesday. This should be a solid 1.5% year over year, which is considerably less bad than feared given the Brexit disruption and the strict lockdown as March activity was strong due to the combination of schools returning and healthy month uh, for retail. Uh, this should further underscore the prospects of a strong recovery in the second quarter and be supportive of the pounds. So from a technical perspective, whilst we hold the lows now at 137.93, I look for a test of monthly range resistance at 140.138. If we can get through there, then we look for a retest of prior highs, 142.40, and then on to test the pivotal 144 area. And finally, in Australia, the Reserve Bank of Australia reiterated a firmly dovish tone at its May policy meeting. While positioning uh, till July is still a decision on whether shifting its yield curve control target bond from uh, April 2024 to November 2024. With inflation having proven to be still rather subdued, surging house prices were considered by some as a potential driver for a less dovish tone by the bank. However, Deputy Governor Guy de Bell made clear that the RBA is not concerned about this factor now, actually seeing it as a welcome sign of return to normality. All this suggests the Aussie dollar is set to remain the lowest yielding commodity currency for longer, but also that there is probably only room to go up from now to the very low rate expectations. This should not happen in the short run. However, when no key data releases are due before the jobs report on the 20th of May, instead some focus will likely be on the Australia-China relationships as tensions still uh, fail to abate. Barring any trade-related retaliation by China and the Australian government's budget announcement, possibly uh, offering some extra support, the Aussie should remain uh, firmly attached to risk sentiment. So whilst we trade through the 74 by, uh, sorry, 78.50 level. We look for a test of range support, uh, monthly range resistance, sorry, uh, 79.60, and then on to test prior highs at the 80 cents level. We may see some back and filling then, but ultimately we're looking for higher prices in the Australian dollar. And that concludes the weekly market outlook for week commencing the 10th of May. As always, join me on Thursday at 1 p.m. UK time for uh, live trade analysis of, uh, of over 20 instruments. And, uh, and as always, traders, uh, best of luck for the week ahead.